Both Catherine Ryan and myself have been lucky to be taught by Ron Quick early on in our careers. Uh, so we got him to do a little talk on our work and he's a well-known and respected Australian artist and has been, had been lecturing for some time. Uh, the exhibition is called Views from the West and it's about how the Western District has shaped the way we look at the landscape and approach the way we paint. Thank you very much Ron for taking the time. It's really appreciated. It's my great pleasure to um, talk to you today about the um, exhibition of Catherine Ryan and Harvey Manifold at the F Project, Looking to the West. And I, it really is a pleasure to do this. I came to Warner in 1968 as a very young man, uh, with the intention of maybe staying a year if I kind of could. Um, I'm still here. I fell in love and fell in love with the plates. Um, when I came, there was a sort of a little scratchy bit of an art school tucked away in the Waterville Technical School. Um, and in 1970, by that stage I've been here for two years, um, we, uh, we began to build the Warrnambool Institute of Advanced Education. And we built an art school within the Warrnambool Institute of Advanced Education. And it was my great pleasure and privilege to build the printmaking department of that. But I also taught painting and drawing. Um, Catherine Ryan and Harley Manifold were amongst the many students who came through Warrnambool Institute and Deakin University. And I guess they're part of that cohort of people who, if you bump into them at some point, um, would often talk um, very warmly about what a wonderful experience they had at the Warrnambool Institute, particularly in that building at Shiver Park, which was east of the Warrnambool city. The painting studio and printmaking studio were fabulous because they were on the ground floor, they looked directly out onto the landscape through enormous windows facing south. Really lovely studios, beautifully lit with this gorgeous view out to the, Mer the Hopkins River and then knowing that the ocean was just over, over there a little bit, not too far, um, just beyond the golf course. So people tended to, to work with the landscape to some degree or another. And I was certainly working with it uh, for a long time while I was working here. I'd often take the train to Melbourne um, or drive to Melbourne on work-related um, activities and I'd often bump into Catherine Ryan who was working in Melbourne at the time. She'd be on her bike heading off to the art st supply store she worked at. We'd chat for a bit and off she'd go and I'd go to my galleries uh, looking at or working with or whatever. Um, but sometimes when you take the train um, to Melbourne, uh, now that Catherine Ryan has made us aware of it, you can look out the window on that early morning train when it's just dawn and it's misty and here's these little Catherine Ryan paintings whizzing past your window as you dash through the part of the country that she grew up in. When you get to Melbourne, you're confronted by a whole different sort of landscapes and they're the sort of landscapes that Harvey Manifold paints architectural landscapes, urban landscapes. Now, there's a lot in common between these two things. While you may say one looks outside and into the, the bigger picture, or the other looks inside to a slightly smaller picture, um, there's a whole lot of things in common. And I know they talk a lot about their work and share ideas. And one of those things is absence. Neither of the artists at, in the work that you're seeing have a figure. There isn't you or I or mum or dad or anybody really. Um, the person who's parked his car in the Harley Manifold car park has um, done so, got up and left. The person who planted the trees and the hedgerows in Catherine Ryan's paintings has long gone, perhaps literally long gone. Um, so we're left with a kind of sense of absence, a emptiness there. Though the emptiness is not total, we know that we've been there, or somebody's been there, somebody planted those trees and somebody built that undercover, undercover car park. We can still walk into these spaces beautifully. Um, you can walk into and around those trees of Catherine's. You can walk a bit further and bump into that hump of hedgerows of cypresses that look a bit like a slug meandering its way across the landscape 
and know that you can walk around them, out the back of them and keep walking further. You know you can walk into that underground car park, slosh through a couple of puddles and then turn left and disappear up to get your coffee upstairs somewhere or on perhaps on Swanson Street or something. You kind of know where these places are. You know that the tiny little painting of a night scene, um, that there's probably somebody just wandered in, parked their car, wandered out. Or maybe they've just left, gone home from work, gone home for dinner. So there's that lovely absence, which kind of I find really interesting because these landscapes weren't like this even 250 years ago. We know the landscape here was occupied for all sorts of reasons we know it, but now there's an absence of that indigenous presence too. It's here a little, but not like it was once. So that, that's gone too. There's, there is a sense that we have been come, done our work, gone away. I find the, the business of being a painter, an interesting one, because the, the painter is not the painting. The painter makes the painting, usually solo, usually by themselves, and usually in a room by themselves, uninterrupted, apart from their partner who comes down occasionally to give a bit of advice, um, make a few corrections, mm, that's not quite right, um, and then wanders off, leaving you to try and work it out. But the painter is the audience of one, to that work that they're making. They stand and look at it and work and they respond. They see something occurring and Catherine talks about in her own discussion on the Art Gallery webpage of responding, of layering things over the top of each other over and over again, correcting and removing and replacing. And I know Harley does the same, certainly the way I work. And we've talked about that process where the work talks to you and you as an audience have to learn to read what it's trying to tell you to do. You watch something, you respond. You warm the colour a little, darken it a little, push the thing backwards and forwards. And what you will find in both these paintings is a lovely sense of space. The thing pushes backwards and forwards. You can walk into it. Somebody once sense of, said of a painting um, in my presence, when we're, not my work, somebody else's, that it was actually a drawing of um, Mount Elephant uh, here. He said, you'd need a cut lunch to get from the front of that picture back to Mount Elephant. The space was so beautifully drawn, and yet it wasn't. It was a piece of paper that was perfectly flat. This, this um, space was an illusion. And again, in, in Catherine and Harley's paintings, the spatial thing that you think you're looking at doesn't exist. It's only somewhere in here. In here for them, because they made it, and in here for you because you respond to it. And there's not just the space. There is quietude, meditative spaces, perhaps alienation, you know, a little, mm, this space is slightly spooky that I might go in there. Um, you know, you might not want to go if the lights turn out, it might be a bit scary. There's the, these responses that each of us can have to the work in a different way. So what we're looking at, is some coloured muck, a furry brush, and a flat piece of canvas, or board, um, turned into a spatial illusion. It's not an illustration, it isn't precise and, and without different meaning, it alludes to things. And you can bring yourself to this and allow yourself to see this with all of that history that sits behind you as you come to it, uh, when I was looking at the work, I was on my computer, which is the only place to see it, or on your phone or whatever. I, I went back and looked at some photographs I'd taken on the Orkneys of the Standing Stones in 2016 and saw the same solidity, verticality and timeless, sort of endless, infinite sense that these stones had in the work of both of these artists. So it takes some time. Um, try and look at each one slowly, get as close as you can. Take the great pleasure in looking at them as um, things of, of tremendous skill, really. Um, but it's more than that. There's an intellect here for both of these painters as they, as they work with the language and material of paint to transpose 
one experience into another, where it transcends painting and transcends simple looking. And I think it was Churchill that said that the image goes through the eyes into the post office of the brain and gets mailed back out onto the surface of the painting uh, as something completely different. It is something about their experience and you can bring your own to it. So Harley and Catherine, thank you. To the people at the F Project, thank you. The Warnable is richer because of the F Project. Um, it gives us the opportunity to show different work at different times in different ways. Thank you for the volunteers who do all of this work and thank you to Catherine and, and Harley for putting this work up for us to look at at our leisure, in our own homes, under quarantine, behind a mask, um, but on our, on our devices. It's a very different experience than doing a bit, do, doing a bit of painting. <laughs>